This is PG from Goza and you're listening to the Dan Chan Show. I've got PG from Grossa with me. How are you, man? Hey, man. Thanks for having me. I'm good. Good. How's things in Germany at the moment, pandemic-wise? How's it been in general? Oh, top as it has been. I, I don't know. Can I swear on this? I can edit it. <laughs> Carry on. I, Carry on. You can edit it. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, messed up just like it's been for the past two years. So nothing's really changed. And, and how's things been for you personally as well the last, say, well, nearly two years now, shall we say? Pretty bad busy i'd say despite nothing going on really in terms of music and gigs and stuff but you know we re we released uh, our second record and uh, that's been pretty pretty busy for me personally because i do all the mixing and yeah do all the management stuff and so yeah that's that's kept me on my we'll, on my toes we'll get into that because i mean i really enjoyed your last album the redemptive end which i'm still enjoying now that came out back in august last year are you happy with the response and the, how it turned out overall Yeah, of course. I mean, um, it feels good to to get this kind of appreciation from from people listening to the record, and uh, yeah, couldn't be couldn't be uh, happier. Yeah, now it's everything I want from modern black metal. You know, the, the groove, the melody, the intensity in your tracks is just awesome. Is it a hard task writing your music? For me personally, it's not because it's just what I'm I'm drawn to as an as an artist and a musician. Um, I think it should never be hard to to write music that you that you really love and that you really uh, can stand behind so yeah it just it just comes some you don't your, have to force it yeah because yeah. some of your tracks are quite long and some artists that i speak to who write like epic length songs always say sometimes it can be certain headaches but you find it obviously quite easy yeah for me it's it's harder in the opposite way to to write short songs and to get <laughs> to the point you know i i always i'm drawn to writing longer songs and yeah it's it's the the challenge is more to to kind of get it all together instead of making 20 minute songs, which would be easy, you know? And what are the overall themes behind the album and your music overall? Um, the main theme, if you will, is basically just uh, emotion and, you know, anger is, is a big theme. And with the latest record, it's a lot more personal stuff. It's very much about inner darkness, depression, personal struggles that that kind of find their way in in the lyrics especially and also the music i think it's a pretty pretty dark record compared to the the first which mm. is more on the angry frustration kind of side and how do you feel you've evolved since your first offering you know 2018's unified in void to the new release how did the writing process differ from that album you said that you got the anger and the more personal do you share the writing or do you do all the writing yourself i did do the the writing myself on the first record um, I pretty much wrote that one before I even asked anyone else to join the band because I, yeah. I started this as a solo project, yeah, basically. We'll, we'll get into that. I want to mention uh, that in a bit. Oh, yeah, all right. And uh, for the second record, yeah, we, we shared writing uh, on that one because just the other guys have different influences that are... Um, they just contribute and add more, you know, spice or more... Spice is a cheesy word, but... Uh, yeah. They add more layers and more interesting uh, kind of structure to the... To the, to the songs, basically. So, yeah, we shared on that one. What is your recording process like in general? Do you do everything uh, di you know, digitally? Do you, do you share it about the files? Or do you get into a room and play together? Mostly we get into a room. Um, we all live kind of close together. So I have uh, a little studio at my home where I do all the recording and mixing and also songwriting. So we usually gather there and uh, do all the songwriting there. And then we send files to our drummer who is a little more remote he lives like uh, two hours away from us uh -huh. so uh, he writes on his own contributes his, his parts and sends it back and we put it all together then at my place mm -hmm. and you you produce you mix you master all yourself you've done an awesome job on that last album thanks i appreciate it man so do you, do, do you find is it because you don't want to share the responsibility or have you got all the ideas in your head and you know exactly what you want rather than giving it to a, a an engineer or a producer and bringing outside sources in yeah pretty much i mean it's for me it's easier to do it myself than compared to having to express what i'm about like in detail i can't really express that in, in mm. words mm. quite good so i i tend to just do it by myself which is of course a lot more work and stuff but in the end i just you know also if i don't like it then i'm just i'm the one to blame mm -hmm. you know I, i like to be in control of that stuff so uh, 
yeah, I just do it myself. So I know it's it's basically done right and just to how I imagine things to be. And I suppose you're not having to rely on anyone else, are you? You're not waiting for them to, to send files back to you, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's another point for that. Yeah, Master of your own destiny, shall we say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can say that. Now, what I find interesting is that, you know, you, you've had the 2018 album, you had the album from 2021 20, last year, and you've, you haven't done a video until The Elegance of Irony, which was from the last album, and it was your first video offering. Was it good to commit something to screen? Yeah, absolutely. It's epic. Uh, it's an epic it video. Talk, talk me through the video. It's a, it's, it's a good story. Yeah, so the video basically uh, came about because uh, Oliver Oliver Koenig from Firtan, which are also on, on AOP Records, which, yeah. which is our label, uh, he directed and shot all the video. And uh, we've got to know him on past gigs that we've done also through AOP Records. And uh, yeah, we thought for this record, we, we want to do a video because the song and, and the material itself kind of asked for it. You know, it's it, uh, how do you say it? Yeah, the music kind of dictated yeah. that we that we want to do a video for it because it it was very theatrical in some mm -hmm. ways. It uh, it had like um, curves in terms of tension in the song, you know, which works really good in in terms of storytelling and stuff. So um, yeah, we just brainstormed ideas and pitched them to Oli, and uh, he just refined it a bit more, added some details. And uh, yeah, shot it then. So what? What is it about? It was quite what was, straightforward. What, yeah. what was the theme? Obviously, the girl being chased out of somewhere and ended up probably drowning herself. Would you say? I don't know. Yeah, the song is basically. If you read the lyrics, I'm, I'm not too big of a fan of explaining the lyrics. I mean, if you read them, then you you get what the video is about. Yeah. But for anyone who hasn't seen it, it's like uh, someone's being chased by basically their their inner struggles mm. and. Um, By the way the world is nowadays and it haunts them into you know being overwhelmed with everything and then you know coming to terms with that and yeah. ending it all you know yeah okay now is there a reason that you haven't done a video before not particularly i mean we we spoke about doing a video but uh actually we did a video but not in 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 this in the way that we made this one we we made uh, live videos for the first record yeah, yeah. because uh in first and foremost goza is a live band in my in my perception yeah so i wanted to convey this aspect of the band first yeah. you know have it out there and people should be able to see what we're about live because mm. that's the main focus for me mm -hmm. but then for the second record we thought to do something different and the opportunity came about with Oli, and so we did it. Yeah, cool. So with the album a few months old now, are you working on new material or are you constantly work, work, you know, writing new material or do you have to sit down for a certain session? It sounds like you're constantly writing, right? Yeah, we're constantly writing. We've been writing ever since we... Even when we recorded the last record, we already had new riffs going around and we just gather ideas and riffs all the time and uh, then just get together and piece them all together and... Uh, But we're constantly writing. It's not that we have to force ourselves or make an appointment. Like, okay, mm. now we're doing songwriting now, and then we're doing yeah, live sure. gigs. It's simultaneously all the time. Yeah. So when can we expect something new? I don't know. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> We've uh, we're just gathering ideas now. We have some rough song sketches uh, done by now, but I think maybe a year and a half, two years, easy before we even will record anything. It's really. It has to feel right, then yeah, of the songs kind of we're we're not in a hurry to release anything or or something like that. We just let time yeah. basically tell us when the songs are ready, and yeah, the song will will then tell us when it's time to to release it. So now you say we, no now, pressure there. yeah, sure. Now you say we, but it used to be I because how did you get the get started? Because this all began as a one man project, as you mentioned earlier. How did it evolve from that to a full band? Yeah, the story is basically this. I started this as a side project to another band that I was in because uh, the other band didn't really play music that I was into at the time. I was just being inspired by Exercises in Futility by Mugua. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. That just gave the, the initial spark for me to, to really want to do something like that myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I started writing material in this vein just by myself for basically just worship, you know. Yeah. And uh, it came to be that my other band, uh, it kind of crumbled away. People moved and, and we had no, no perspective in that sense. So um, 
yeah, that band ended that way. And I thought, yeah, I have all this, all these riffs, all this material. Um, why not gather some members? And it, I started the band just with people that I've known way before Groza even was started. So I didn't audition people. I had no, no really, no intentions, no aspirations, no, no nothing. I just showed it to my buddies that I've known for, for a couple of years and asked if they want to jam. So that yeah. was basically it. And as I said, we never had any intentions to, to promote this band aggressively or get a record deal or something like that. It just happened. It's not that we, we ever pushed it in that sense. So yeah, I just asked the, the dudes that I've known if they wanted to jam and play some live gigs, because as I said before, that's the main, the main focus that I have in music. Mm. And, um, yeah, so that's how that came about. So where does the name come from? Because there's, there's, I know there's an assault rifle called a Grossa. There's, uh, there's a Magar album called Grossa. There's uh, some Slavic information back across. So where, where, where do you draw it from? It's a mixture of the Slavic aspect and the, the Grossa album yeah. by Magar, of course. Yeah. Because um, no secret, you're yeah, heavily, the, heavily influenced by Magar, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, we, we don't hide it. <laughs> we, no. we love the band and... We started this as a basically as a worship project of mine because I love them so much. You know, as a band, they they probably always be my favorite band. Mm, awesome. So uh, yeah, no need to to make a secret out of it. So yeah, yeah the name is comes from a, a set list actually that I got from from M, the singer. Yeah. And uh, I had that on my on my right beside my desk. I had it on the wall, and uh, I just when when it came time to to name the files that I was exporting. I just saw that set list and said, "Oh, yeah, Groza sounds great with no meaning behind it, just as a, a as a name, first mm -hmm. of all." Yeah. And I then later came to realize what it meant, and it seemed to fit, yeah. so I kept it. That's that's the way that happened. So, what's with the anonymity? Is this just to you know take the faces away from the music, remain a mystery? It's not so much about mystery. It's just that I don't think that identities and and the personality behind the band matters at all. It's music should always be about music just for the sake of itself and not about people or what they do besides music. I've, I've gotten this question a lot because of course people get interested when you, when you have no face and no name to, towards a person and you get a lot more interested just naturally. But uh, yeah, for me, it doesn't matter and it should not matter. It's just about music and that's, that's all. Mm, cool. So, so, uh, so with that, with the question about the video earlier, were you in the video? <laughs> Can I ask? Yeah, yeah. Actually, we the the guys in the band play all the the creatures with the masks and cool. stuff. We represent all the 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 demons that the protagonist, the girl, has in the video. So yeah, wicked. that was us. Wicked, wicked. Now, when did your passion for black metal begin, and say metal in general? Yeah, I've always listened to metal. Metal is my main music genre. You know, I've started with just the classics, Black Sabbath, Metallica was great on me when I when I grew up and stuff like that. And black metal, I mean, I started maybe 10 years ago. I got into black metal really, really hard. I started with, you know, the old Dark Throne stuff. Yeah. I listened to Mayhem a lot when yeah. I grew up, like uh, late teens, I suppose. And yeah, I just stayed in the in the genre all those years and played in some other bands. I played in death metal bands. I played in thrash bands. But uh, yeah, black metal has always been my, my main genre if you will to yeah. listen to you know what's what's the future for black metal do you think do you think it'll always remain a sub-genre or do you think that you know, p more people will want the more extreme music and it could rise to more commercialism i think again talking about magua <laughs> i think they yeah. drew a pretty big new audience to the genre mm. i think black metal stagnated kind of the last 10 years or so i i suppose so uh, especially Miguel, all this the the wave of new bands um i think they brought a new sense to black metal and uh, also a new audience which brought new influences again and we see a lot of bands coming out of that and uh, i think it will you know develop from there and yeah hopefully grow yeah i mean obviously you weren't around during the original black metal you know say the early 90s no. mid 90s no but, i wasn't <laughs> but i mean do you after all the films and the books that have come out and the reading and understanding all the albums do you ever think black metal took it a little too far it's a pretty interesting question because can black metal even take it too far i mean well, that's no. the point I mean, as it stands know? now I mean, for, for what we know it used you know, to be the point know. taking it too far yeah know? yeah 
What do you think? So, no, I think it's being extreme just for the sake of being extreme has always kind of been one main theme of black metal and mm. uh, it's a good one. I, I don't see it as much as in today's bands and today's music. Um, but yeah, I think the genre wouldn't be what it is now without that mindset in the in the early days. So, mm, of course, yeah. of course. Now, what music, if any, do you enjoy away from metal? Well, quite a lot. I still listen to all the classic rock stuff. I'm a huge Black Sabbath fan. Yeah, listening to all the old English bands. I also I also love uh, a lot of music soundtracks. Yeah. So yeah, it's a broad spectrum. I'd listen to anything that's good. Basically, a lot of synthwave nowadays. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Massive. Anything, nice. anything that that I love. So yeah. I, I try not to to uh, how do I say it? I try not to limit myself to to one specific genre. I just listen to whatever I like, basically. Yeah. Now, show wise, have you managed to get any shows in over the pandemic of the last year and a half, two years? Yeah, we played a quite a lot of shows in comparison to other bands um mm. we we were lucky enough to to step in for a lot of international bands like on and festivals mainly in germany that's good you know when bigger international bands had to cancel because of travelers restrictions and stuff like that we mm. uh, kind of stepped in on a lot of those so yeah that was quite fortunate for us so we i think we played around 20, 30 shows over the last two years, which is pretty good for oh, the circumstances. Very good, so. very good compared to some. Yeah. And I see you've got an awesome yeah. tour set up for 2023 with Harakari for the Sky. That's next year. Is there anything on the agenda for this year? Yeah, we have uh, quite a few gigs planned for this year. Also uh, a small European tour, which is going to be announced soon. Um, yeah, we're going to be, again, focused in Germany, Austria, that uh, that area, because we just simply don't know yeah, how the travel restrictions are going to be in the future so yeah. we just focus on on that kind of lens but um yeah we have some gigs coming up so just cool. check our facebook or social media to to get more information on shows that are, that are coming up for sure now what do you want to achieve from grossa you know do you want the, the success or do you want to stay on the ground we don't care we just <laughs> it's a cliche answer we just want to make music that moves us and that uh that's the priority that yeah just it's pleasing about yourself. expression and yeah pleasing pleasing ourselves and just getting getting bad shit off our minds and having kind of a, a way to express that has always been the main uh, purpose of music for me or making music in that sense yeah so it's not about success i as I said, we didn't push any of this. It's just it just happened, and we don't complain about it. It's it's great that people appreciate us, but uh, if they wouldn't, I'd be still doing this. So mm. I don't really care. We don't. We have no. We have no ambitions in that sense. Now, this last question is probably going to get a cliche an answer as well. But what is on the musical bucket list for yourself and the band? What do you want to achieve or do? What what gigs or festivals or countries do you want to hit? What do you want to do? Well, you mentioned it before. The Haraki for the Sky Tour is a pretty big. Yeah. Uh, point on my bucket list is actually because I'm a huge fan of the band. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. And uh, that's going to be great if it takes place. Nobody knows, but fingers crossed. Yeah, just play the all the major festivals that we've attended as kids mm. and look up looked up to the bands up on stage. I mean, who doesn't want to do that? Of course. But uh, yeah, we've we've already played with Magua, which was a big yeah big. Uh, bucket list Big thing tick. for me <laughs> yeah we played with them in, in berlin it was quite surreal we opened amazing. the night and they closed it so kind of full circle you know amazing amazing uh, but yeah now finally do you have a message for the new and the old fans yeah just listen to the record if you want check it out um maybe it's for you maybe it's not but uh if you if you enjoy it then join us PG, thanks so much for joining me on the show. Good luck with everything that's going to happen in the future, and I'll be seeing you on the road in 23, maybe sooner. Thanks for having me.